Welcome back guys, Dragon's Dogma Part 2 is notorious for its poor performance. It has just received a new update. This update includes tons of fixes and performance improvements, added features and adjustments, further fixes to issues around CPU overload in certain situations, reducing frequency of crashes, adding casual mode. People were asking for a hard mode and they added a casual mode. This game still does not support FSR frame generation officially. However, you can use FSR frame generation in this game by using a free mod called DLSS Enabler. It will replace DLSS frame generation with FSR frame generation, FSR 3.1 to be more precise. I'll just scroll down to the performance part. Frame rates in areas with a lot of non-playable characters such as town centers should be improved. In addition, turning the graphics settings to low should further improve frame rates. Players on Steam can achieve the same results from changing their graphics settings. I'll be testing the game in the city of Wernworth. We'll be measuring the latency using AMD's frame latency meter. We'll run the game on my ROG LM. I have the set to an extreme variant of this device. First, I'll show you how to get DLSS enabler working in this game. Download RE framework. Latest version. Click on releases section. In GitHub. I'll give its link in the description. And just expand the assets section. From here, click on DD2.zip. Dragon's Dogma Part 2. I'll be using this version of DLSS enabler mod 3.01.001.0 beta 12. Expand the asset section. Click on the exe link. Open file explorer. Go to downloads directory. First we need to set up RE framework. There's add zip file. Open it. Just need to copy this DLL file. D input it. Paste it in the games install directory. Steam version of the game, select it in your Steam library, right click, manage, then click on browse local files, paste the DLL file here, there's the game's exe file, now just run the game, you need to initialize RE framework, yeah this folder and this file will be generated, wait for RE frameworks menu to pop up, there it is, it's loading, see, initializing, process complete, took about 10 seconds, Upon reaching the menu, just click on quit. Now we are ready to install DLSS enabler. Just copy the game's install directory like this. Execute DLSS enabler's exe file in this table in the downloads directory. More info, run anyway. I accept. Next. Paste the game's directory here. Next. First option check. Install as a version.dll file. Check this box next to enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Install. Process complete. Uncheck this box. Click on finish. Go back to the games install directory. We need to edit the nvngx.inf file. Look for it. There it is. Open it. By default generator is set to auto. If you want to use FSR 3.1 frame generation, just set generator to FSR 31. If for some reason you want to use FSR 3.0, just set generator to FSR 30. I missed the S. Make sure reflex is set to on, enabled. On PCs with a non-RTX based GPU, XCSS subscaler will be used by default version 1.3.1. On PCs with an RTX based GPU, DLSS subscaler will be used. Click on File, click on Save, Close. I'll be using AMD's Frame Latency Meter to measure the system latency. Already shown its setup process in my Cyberpunk video. Launch the exe file using Run as Administrator mode. Open its settings and just press the right mouse button. Connect it my Razer or Ritchie mouse to LMI 2.4 GHz band wireless mode. Show all measurements for line setting check. Mouse move setting check. Game uses frame generation. Disable it for the time being. Click on save settings to Hanai. Yes. Close. Keep the app running in the background. For Dragon's Dogma 2, I've set the UMA buffer size to 6 GB. My Life Sunny One BIOS version 339. I've installed AMD's latest technical preview GP driver that enables AFMF2. Using a 25 watts manual profile, all three power values set at 25 watts. 720p resolution CPU boost disabled. Connected my Gullicate KK3 Max gamepad to LLI Bluetooth port. Launch the game. RE framework is initializing. I'll be using 
a custom afterburn overlay to show you the performance metrics. There it is. Game started. And just minimize it. Game is running in the background. Just wanted to show you the game's cache file. You don't need to delete it before launching the game. See, there it is. Game is working, did not crash. Close RE Frameworks menu. Show you the internal settings. Just using FreeSync, enable, VSync off, anti lag setting disabled as well. Graphic settings, 720p resolution display mode, borderless window. Uncap the FPS, DLSS super resolution setting is unlocked using its balance preset. This is basically XCSS subscaler. Frame generation disabled for the time being. Low settings, shadow cache setting enabled, motion blur disabled. And that's it. Straight away load the demanding World War City area. Lot of non playable characters around me. I bought a house in World War. Serves as a save point. Standing at the entrance of my house here, FPS is around 33. I'll just start FLM, press its hotkey, Alt plus T. After pressing the key, the camera will move automatically like this. Just wait for about 20 to 25 seconds for the application to gather enough data to process the latency numbers. 30 seconds have passed. I'll stop the test. Press Alt plus T keys. Minimize the game. Open FLM. There it is. Let's study the numbers. Average FPS was around 35. See? Latency was around 90 milliseconds. Average. Okay, so now I'll change the settings. Enable the setting. Game uses frame generation. Save settings. Enable frame generation. On. It's the same sequence. You can see FPS increased to around 70. I'll just start the test. Camera is moving automatically. Just wait for around 20 to 25 seconds. Done waiting. Stop the test. Minimize the game. Open FLM. I just zoom in. The average FPS was around 68. Average latency was around 103 milliseconds. Not bad at all. Without frame generation, the average latency was around 90 milliseconds. So FSR frame generation via DLSS enabler increased the latency by around 13 milliseconds. For reference, AFMF2 increases latency by around 15 to 20 milliseconds as seen from AMD's performance overlay. Good results here. Now I'll be playing the game. First with frame generation disabled. Off. Upscaler balance. I'll explore the area on foot. Keep an eye on the FPS counter. Okay. We are getting 30 FPS. Not bad. This is the marketplace. Prior to this update, here FPS used to drop down to around 24. Still getting close to 30 FPS. 28 to 30 FPS. High VRAM usage. Around 5.4 GB. Almost hitting the GPU bottleneck. So the game's performance is limited by the single core CPU performance. Close to 30 FPS means frame generation will be effective. I'll just leave this place. Yeah, gameplay is choppy. Characters are appearing right in front of me. Appearing out of thin air. This area is very demanding on the GPU. Yeah, we are hitting the GPU bottleneck this time. And FPS dropped down to around 24. So it's 24 to 30 FPS. With this new update on ROG LA. Image quality is looking decent. Would not recommend dropping the preset to performance. Upscale as preset. 
okay now I will enable frame generation reload the same sequence frame generation on see same sequence leave my house check out the input response yeah, input delay is not a problem play the game from a third person perspective fps is close to 60 and just go to the marketplace more demanding area 53 fps just not observing any significant graphical artifacts around the character model games hard elements are not flickering characters <laughs> are appearing out of thin air <laughs> low settings <laughs> they are spawning right in front of me See, entrance of one word is very demanding. 53 FPS, something happened here. It was a checkpoint. FPS dropped to 47 for about half a second. Back up to 56. Creature in the background, I'll show you some combat. Very demanding sequence. Yeah, FPS dropped to around 43. Audio is not stuttering. You can play the game this way. Alright. Time to attack the creature. We just want the creature to perform some powerful moves. Stress the processor. This is how combat looks like. Frame generation enable on Frog LR. 43 to 50 FPS. Try to grab its tail. My pawn grab it. Oh my god. Epic fight. Need some damage there. What is it doing? What's with these other animals? Yeah, this new update really helped in improving the game's performance. Helped in reducing the stuttering. Using DLSS enabler mod, you can enable FSR frame generation. Even on non RTX GPUs and as Radeon 780M GPU, 40 to 60 FPS. Finally, it landed. So that's it with the video guys, I hope you find useful, thanks for watching and have a nice day.